thousand feet up in the air And bitch, I'm high as heavy Shooters knock you off or I'm in Italy with that Mac 11 I'm ready Alright, welcome to 30,000 Feet the Podcast My name is Leso, Leso Productions over here And I got my boy on the left side Shit, I believe it's the left side for myself uh, Contraband Cartel over here on the left So, we about to just chop it up Get into some music and all that Say what's up to him, buddy What's good, everybody? Uh, if you're just tuning in, welcome to the podcast. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm Brandon. I'm part of the Contraband Cartel, and I'm just here to chop it up with my boy Lesso. See what's up. Okay. So that being said, uh, first I wanted to start off by asking: You've got a lot of stuff that's already out. Um, what made you kind of start to uh, put work out in the first place? Because um, I know you have a lot of work out with other artists, but in in yourself what made you uh want to put put a lot of work out within the past i'd say like what year or so two years L way less we're talking like seven months bro seven, seven months seven eight months put out bro. a lot of work in seven months that's for sure <laughs> um well i kind of always like i've always been making music since i was like a little eighth grader oh, well i was always okay. around like, just fucking around and shit and it wasn't until i started linking up with like actual musicians that i started getting my work out there yeah. And they were getting access to a lot of cool shit that I just wasn't able to do because I didn't have my own brand. I didn't have my own name to stand on. I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I just had the talent to back it up. So I was thinking, okay, like I'm kind of tired of people also took me for granted, which I just didn't like. People That's a fact. Like, you're just, you're just, a, you're just a beat maker, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm tired of being treated like that. So That's a fact. I started doing my own thing, started putting out my own work and shit. I haven't regretted it since. It's That's awesome. good. It's good. I see the work ethic. I want to ask you that you bring that up. Uh, so do you feel personally like uh, beat makers are underrated? And do you feel like beat makers and producers should be the same category? It's No, I think the separate category thing does help. Because like if you literally just make beats, like and that's all you do, it's not fair to put you in the same category as someone who's like the mastermind behind the track, you know, like if a producer sat down, made the beat, then contacted the artist, made, booked the studio time, made sure they got in there, hired a session player to yeah. like actually do that stuff. Like you deserve your own category, bro. Cause you're doing more than just making the beat. Yeah, I agree with that. Can you give me an example of a situation of a song where you feel like you produce the song and then uh, an example to compare it where you just kind of made the beat and just kind of let the artist build. And what you prefer out of the two, do you prefer being in creative control or do you prefer letting the artist kind of also kind of be in creative control? Well, it's a lot funner when I, when I can also contribute and I can make sure like, it's just a lot funner that way when I could talk with someone and make sure we're on the same page here because ultimately right. we're just trying to make music that, you could feel music that music should make you move. That's my creed, bro. Yeah. So make, if I'm on the same like page with the artist, I can confidently put out something with that artist. And like an example of that would be like Sombers Forest with uh, Xanabis actually. Yep. I had, me and him were just talking in the studio and he asked me if he could like lay down some chords on, his, on like the guitar he was freestyling. And I was like, go for it. He plays it. I rearrange it, I put the drums over it, and then as he's writing the lyrics, I start pitching, I'm like, oh, you should say this, because that rhymes with that, and it sounds dope, and he's like, yeah, cool, and then he builds off of it, and it, it just had that dynamic back and forth. I mixed it in front of him, too, which a lot of beat makers don't do. Yeah, that's, too. that's dope. When you can mix a song in front of an artist, I feel like it helps build trust between the artist and producer a lot more, because they understand that the producer uh, has a good... Um, ear to his sound so he, uh, he the the fact that you can mix in front of them and feel comfortable kind of doing the nitty-gritty stuff and allowing them to hear that i know a lot of producers who are like oh okay i'll send you the song in, in a few days two three days you know and you know they want to zone out in their headphones and just mix by themselves and you know i'm cool with it but when the producer gets to mix in front of me it's definitely more of a connection i build with the producer yeah and i like that too because like the artist can directly tell me if he likes what he's hearing or not or yeah. like what about putting in this effect? It's something mm -hmm. that I would have never thought of, for example. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck, you're right. And like stuff like that really makes the song more unique. It's more, not, not intense, but it's just more personal, you feel me? Have you ever thought about making your own music? 
How so? Like your own, like writing your own music, putting out your own. <laughs> I don't have the talent home. for rapping per se. And I also don't have like, I just don't have anything I want to spit on the mic and like yeah. feel 100%, you know, yeah. like down for. It's not for everybody. I was just curious. Yeah, as far as rapping goes, uh, I prefer to leave it to the people that have a message to say. Mm -hmm. I prefer to people like that have been doing it for years and that are really like experts at their craft. Yep. Do you feel like you can portray a good message through just the instrumental too? The way I see instrumentals is kind of like the canvas, you know, like I can set down the groundwork, I can set down the foundation, but it's Mm -hmm. up to the artist to, you know, take it in their direction and kind of make the most out of it. That's a fact. But as far as beats go, yeah, like my beats tell the story, but like, I it's not just. I was gonna say because your beats are mad intricate and I'm like different, that. like compared to a lot of other beats out here. The way I see it, I just, I'm just having fun with it, you know. Like I get bored of like patterns really quickly, so the more I switch it up, or like even if it's just something as simple as dropping out the drums for like two bars, yeah, like yeah. that still has a lot. Yep. Yeah. Now all those little tricks they stand out though because you have a sound easily you you have a not 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 in a bad way because you can say like people have a sound where it's like the same sound all the time but you have like a sound that that morphs and changes because you grow as you learn to produce and make music and make beats but what i noticed with you is that you uh you love to uh build like these complex patterns in the beat they might be they might sound complex but honestly it's just a bunch of simple patterns put together yeah sure there are a bunch of patterns put together, but I mean, in, in I, a lot of trap beats and shit like that that I hear today are oh, yeah. Yeah. Mad I basic, know. like garage band ass beats. And it's just like, I feel like yours have a lot more substance to them. Like they're full, they're complete. A lot of beats are like halfway done, I feel like. So thank you. But yeah, I also like what made me want to start too was kind of like uh, just whack ass youtube beats bro like i would see my homies back <laughs> use these garbage ass beats and i was like bro like <laughs> let me bless you like come on what are you doing with that hey man we all start there we all do start there but it's, i just wanted there. like to push my homies out of that realm and just like come on let's let's make something actual you know now that being said does that keep like do you refrain yourself from putting your beats out on youtube like that no, because I, I believe in my shit. So I just put it up. And okay. if, like, if you want to listen to it on your own time, if you want to freestyle it with your homies or whatever, it's, it's there. And yeah. also, I also did it for like SEO purposes, discoverability. Yep. That's that a, fact. A, lot, a, lot too. a lot of producers get found on YouTube because that's where we all, that's really where all of us as artists to do start to go look for beats when we first start. I this noticed. Like, I noticed. We don't know where the fuck uh, to go. All we know is that we can freestyle over instrumentals on YouTube. So we're like, fuck it. We're going to grab a YouTube beat. And that's how it starts. Eventually, you know, we all evolve and we grow and we get real beats and exclusive yeah. shit. But you feel me? We all start there. But uh, with that being said, have you ever uh, thought about putting together your own tape? Tape? I mean, your own tape. Like your own, like, uh, like I've seen, there's a producer I know named Lando, and he loves to put out these little, like, eight song beat tapes, basically. No verses, no rapping on nothing. They're just, straight to spotify just the instrumental vibe out okay, really when i first to... jumped up the contraband cartel when i first jumped it up like the intention was to put out a beat tape but as i kept getting deeper and deeper into it i was like i want to make songs like yeah. i don't i don't personally listen to a lot of just instrumentals by itself yeah. so why i wouldn't subjugate you to do the same thing if yeah. i don't do it i want to listen to like i want to listen to rap i'm a person too so yeah yeah you could still pull some like dj khaled type shit though it's kind of what i'm doing with my spotify. With a lot of artists that's what i was about to like segue into is uh since i've worked with a few artists uh i have that trust with them so i can easily tell them to spot me with a verse they'll, yeah, send it through and they'll help me facts help yeah i think out. i think that's something you could definitely put together and i think that could be far because overall I maybe know like one or two producers who are like actively trying to like build themselves as a brand. And unfortunately, I feel like that's what tends to hold producers back. Okay, how so? Is that like 
a lot of them are really fucking good at what they do, but they don't want to put their name or their face or like themselves out there as their brand. Like, you know what I mean? But you kind of have to do that though. If you you do have to do that. That's what I'm saying. Like you have to do that. But I know so many producers who refuse to kind of do that and would rather just sit in the background and kind of make the beats, send them to the dude or just put them on YouTube and that be that. And you feel me like, but like building a brand, you know, where do you, where do you want to take that? Like what kind of ideas do you have in when building your brand? And like, it's like and where, do you, where, DJ where do you see yourself in five years from now? Five years from now? Kind of playing the role that Dre did honestly like making sure that the beats are good making sure that i put my best foot forward there getting the right artists on them getting the right session players in there making yep. sure we're in the right space make sure the vibe is right and then like i want to get into the marketing too but i want to help push i want to help any way that i can yeah. any outlet that i have i will use it to the like to the fullest of my ability when it comes to putting out a song and i just want to s- just scale that at a humongous level in five years yeah uh, yeah you can too, cause you got you got you got a lot of people who fuck with you. I like to think so. Yeah, for sure. So what if, what has the quarantine been like for you? Has that affected you working with people? Like you probably can't get in the studio as much. So have you just been home cooking up like all day long and just getting better, or have you been sending out beats to people? Have you like been trying to stay active and you feel me like? open to people who want to work or are you kind of just sitting back during quarantine well it definitely fucked my shit up because like uh every time i would drop a song i would do like real promotion like at my school i'd go out and i'd give out red bulls like this for free yeah. but he, like there's a little qr code on them and it would take into my song and i was really like oh. i was actually doing shit for people you feel That's me like dope. i was actually doing that and i had to hook up on free Red Bulls. Like I was getting crates of them for free. <laughs> so then I was just like, okay, I might as well use these for marketing. That's what I was doing when I yeah, yeah. talked to people. But since now nobody wants to link, school shut down, like all that got taken down. Do um do you have uh any um uh, like work that's already completed that you have like planned to come out within the next you feel me like couple months? Or uh I've got two singles lined up that I definitely want to drop and that I believe in heavy. Facts. We got some stuff in the vault too. Yep. Stuff in the vault too. That's just hot. So, do you feel like you're going to stick with just hip hop and rap? You want to branch out? You want to do other genres? Kind of want to work with some singers a bit, do some R&B, music, girls that can fuck too, you feel me? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, just making some baby. That's where the bag at too. The bag, it the bag is in every genre. Let me just the say, bag that. is in every genre. That's the bag. every genre. But you know, I'll kind of, on top of making like the trap ass hip hop that I make, like I also want to make music that like bad bitches get smoked to on the Snapchat stories. You yeah, me? but I see that when I say like that's where the bag at. I mean, like I feel like a lot of producers overlook the fact that like they just be making hip hop beats, just rap beats, and that's all they do. And like, there's not enough people who are making those types of beats. So like being able to do that, diversify yourself, show different, you feel me, scales. Also, I feel like a lot of R&B beats nowadays are somewhat similar to hip hop beats. Yeah, there's a fusion in there for sure. Yeah. Like a lot of R&B, I'll hear a lot of R&B chords with some Trap Ass Jones before it, and it'll sound cool. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. That's a fact. Um, who's your inspirations as a beat maker? Or in general, as a producer, as an artist, even. All, All right, I got to give, like, I would have never started doing music if it wasn't for, like, my first two teachers that taught me how to make music, which was okay. uh, my boy, Bernard Capistrano. He goes by Solacist. Solacist. And then mm-hmm. my boy, Emilio M. Diaz. Both of them taught me how to make beats. So they have, like, their production style rubbed off on me. Like, I was their, they're like my senseis, bro. I'll put it like that. Senseis yeah so their style definitely stuck with me but then as far as like established as producers go uh dj cal's production is always cool fucking ronnie j had a huge impact on me with his hard ass basses uh metro booming 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my freshman year. Yeah, my freshman year, he definitely rubbed off on me. And then I've always wanted to have a Metro beat. It's gonna happen one day. Oh, for sure, bro. He's one been doing day. some different shit too. Like he's been starting to give him some more soul sampled stuff. That's kind of sick. Yeah, yeah. That's have you ever thought about uh like collaborating with other producers? Do you do that already a lot? No, I do that all the time, man. All the time. Collaboration's key, especially in music, bro. Like Thanks. I could do a lot on my own, but it's just like having that other person like that could just completely take it in a new direction or put in some immense amount of work. Like that's I love that. It's what I'm here for, essentially. I love collaboration. I love working with other people because music's supposed to be like a social thing. Facts. Who do you want to collaborate with right now? Like that you feel like you're able to. Like if you if if they heard your music and saw your page right now, they were like, Oh yeah, I would collaborate with this guy. You talking about like bigger established artists or smaller artists? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like people who like you feel like you could hit up right now and maybe have a chance at like people right now. Yeah. Uh, I want to work with Summer Black. That okay. girl got vocals. Yeah. I sent her a beat and we do have something locked in, but okay. I needed to re-record some shit. Uh, Lexi Reed is another singer who just got mad vocals, bro. And I guarantee if I were to like reach out to her and I make her like the right beat, she'll just hop on it instantly. Hell yeah. Most definitely. Two big ones on my mind. Do you feel like Bay Area, like I, I was talking with Mally about this on the last episode, um, how we feel like Bay Area artists are kind of like locked. Like if you blow up in the Bay Area, you're kind of like stuck in the Bay Area. Like you're branded as a Bay Area artist and like you're never really going to like reach a broader spectrum necessarily. And it's been a long time since somebody's been able to kind of break that barrier. No, that's true. That's very true. Especially with the Bay Area sound. I hear it, but at the same time, I'm like of the mentality that it's better to go deep with your audience than wide. Like, I'd rather have a cult fan base that's just going to rock with what I do. You'd rather have like 100,000 people that will listen to your music, everything you drop, no matter what, rather than a million people who occasionally listen to your music. Absolutely. That's how I feel that yeah. it is. So as far as like Bay Area artists, I can see where you're coming from. I can definitely see what Molly was talking about too. But I think it's just way better to be a big ass fish in a small pond mm. than to be just, you know, a tadpole in a huge okay. sea. So you feel like you could not you could, but like you feel like building your own core fan base is 10 times. I feel, I agree with you 100% because I feel like if you have a core fan base, then you're set. That's a career. At that point. You have a career. Absolutely. And a lot of these people would rather go viral over their music. And yeah. those yeah. who have a core fan base are music or Yeah, because it's one thing to be like known on Instagram for your gimmicks. Like, yeah. remember Boom Gang? Remember Boom Gang? Yeah. Like, he went viral on his gimmicks, but Thanks. I wasn't talking no boom game. Like, yeah, and just he dropped not, music, too. I, I didn't even know he was a rapper. I just, I fucking made the mistake of listening to it, but then upon listening to it, I was just like, <laughs> oh, is it good? <laughs> no, I'm not checking for this. I was like, so then that's what it kind of came down to, you know? It's like, do you want to be viral as fuck, but have no one really give a shit about the stuff that you're doing? Yeah. Or would you rather have people that legitimately rock with you? And that yep. like you for you, not for your antics, not for your gimmicks. Fact. Yeah. Uh, there's too many artists who just be trying to focus on the gimmick stuff and just want to go viral. Like, I get it, but like, it, no, better, translate, it. it better translate to your music or else it's not worth it. Well, like, yeah. there's a certain way you can make that work. Like, no, wow. there is absolutely a certain translate way you can make that work. Directly to your music, but like, it has to be like, your music has to be some way involved with you going viral. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just like something that I find mad difficult to do. Personally. I mean, what can I say, man? Attention is like the ultimate asset, right? Yeah. You have a lot of eyes on you. You can, it's up to you to play those cards, right? Yeah. You got the attention. Once the attention's there, it's up to you to say something. It's up to you to direct traffic. It's up to you to like, yeah. really use it. And if you're just going to keep, 
entertaining people and like not really giving them anything of substance, what are you doing? What are you really doing? Thanks. That's true. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you was about um, kind of like going forward. Would you ever think about like working with like a team, like a label team, kind of like, a, have you ever heard of like internet money and like Nigeria oh. or like those kind of groups of people who kind of like sign producers, specifically producers and kind of like build them up? Would you ever no. do something like that? No, I'm trying, trying to build my own team. team. I'm trying to build my own team with the Contraband Cartel. Because people think that the Contraband Cartel is my name. It's not. I'm just a member of the group. Right? But I, you know, that was my fault the way I branded it. But anyways, I'm trying to build a team. No, so I'm all for, like, collaborating with other teams. I'm all for, like, putting in work together. But as far as me signing over my creative control and, like, you know, like, kind of just taking me away from what I do, I... I couldn't see myself doing that. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, as far as it goes, I like the marketing. I like meeting new people. I like building relationships. Like I like all that shit. How so many I, other I, members of contraband cartel are there? At the moment I got two. I got my, I got my second producer and I've got my videographer. So it's not just beats. It's contraband cartel is spanning out as well. Yeah. As the, video. the goal is to build a team. So, right, so let's say we find a, like, a rapper that's just not getting his dues. But if I have a team that knows how to do the marketing, the graphic designs, the videos, I could just be like, hey, let's work together. We could pull out, like, a full, like, damn near label-like release, but with none of the bullshit. None yeah. of the bullshit. Would you charge for that, though? Like, that sounds like a business. That's what I'm building it up to be. But at the moment, like, I kind of just have to, like, either that's what i do pretty much in a different way than you do it though um with my label is just being able to give artists who don't have a platform for distribution and playlisting and all the kind of nitty-gritty like industry tactics to get your song heard and streamed that's by mass audiences like you know those kind of tactics i've for three years i've been doing it so i just know what i'm doing so you know, I can sell that as a service. Um, but I find that dope how what you're doing is kind of like putting together like a team of people to build, you know, me in general, I'm just kind of trying to help put artists on, get their music out there and get it heard. But you're really building like an actual team of people. I'm mm -hmm. doing it by myself. Cool. I'm up with that though. That's hard. That's hard to do to be able to get a bunch of people together and all have uh, the same goal in mind. Well, that's where personal branding kind of comes in, right? Because if people yep. fuck with you, and then like, since they since they already fuck with you, it's gonna be easier to pitch that idea to them. Mm -hmm. Then as opposed to like, hey, I'll pay you this amount of quantity to do some half-ass work. Yeah, like, exactly. Bad model. Yeah, I could never start like trying to do something like that or turn it into a business without having proven that I'm doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense, like yeah. my numbers have to be up. For you to want to work with me or else you're gonna look at me weird as fuck like how are you gonna get my numbers up if your numbers aren't even up yeah i get that so that's, that's true you gotta fucking show some proof first mm -hmm. hold up but as far you said you've been doing something like this for three years do you have any advice for a motherfucker that's like eight months into this um in terms of what like branding or in terms of like small like tactics like with getting your music heard well, what's something you wish you knew when you were first starting this? One, make sure you have all your publishing and you own it. Yeah. So make sure you have an ASCAP, make sure you have a BMI, and make sure you own both your publishing and your writing. Uh -huh. And make sure you're submitting every song that you distribute through DistroKid or CD Baby or whatever you use. Make sure you put in the code into your publishing and submit it and register it so that you're getting all your royalties. Because if you just put it in through a distributor, you're only really getting half of what you can earn. Mm. So when you submit it through your publishing, you're going to get that other 50% that you're owed for every song. Because they pay you separately for the song itself and the streams than for the actual writing of the song and the production. Yeah. So you got to make sure you're getting both streams of revenue. And then... Another thing is playlisting. 
mad important. Uh -huh. Just find connections to uh, make people. There, like Spotify has algorithmic playlists that they do on their own and that they their own editorial playlists. Yeah, and those you have to submit through your Spotify for artists um, thing. But when it comes to like regular people like me and you, we can all create our own Spotify playlists. And there are people like me and you who have playlists with hundreds of thousands of followers and listeners who are just, you know, they've just created a public playlist and that's what they do. And you got to get in contact with people who do that kind of stuff and get them to put your song on their playlist. And some of them charge a fee. Some of them just want to, if they fuck with your music, they'll put it on there. You just got to build those types of relationships and, um, just like mad social media content, like not necessarily you posting a lot, but like other people posting you as well as not yourself. Uh, when people see somebody else post you, not you post yourself, yeah. um, it, it sparks something in their mind that means like this person is popular or mm -hmm. more important or trending because somebody else is posting about him. You feel yeah. me? If that makes any sense. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. I get that. Yeah. It's like so, it's How I have you post like my cover art when something drops or something like that. Or like a video drops and I send you like a little clip for you to post. Yeah, I post it because it's dope though. Yeah, no, of course. It, but of course. at the same time, when people see that you're posting me, this is a whole new audience of people that I don't necessarily reach out to on a daily basis. And they see it and then they visit my page. So the more people I send that little clip to and they post it, you know, I'm reaching 20, 30 new people every time I send it out to somebody. And that's an easy way for, you know, one, two, three people to start listening to your music. They fuck with it. You know, they keep listening. They subscribe to your Spotify. It's just mad branding, but you got to be consistent. It's all consistency. You got to remember to do it for every song. And it's grueling and it's tiring and it's boring as fuck. But it's worth it. Because if you do it all, you're going to get the hundreds of thousand streams that I've gotten so far in five months. For sure, then. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I got to hit up some more playlists then. But what I was going to say earlier is, doesn't it irk you when you meet, like, a motherfucker and he just doesn't want to invest in himself? Like, for some reason, they're just being cheap as fuck with themselves. Like, but they claim to believe in their shit. Yep. That shit pisses me the fuck off, bro. Uh, yeah. Like, I'll be the, like... I'll be the only person, like, motherfucker in my school that, like, that ass run Instagram ads or, like, I'll, we'll put money behind what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I'm running Instagram ads all the time. Yeah. Well, I, Best way to do it. I'll meet a rapper, though. I'll meet another artist at my school, and they're like, oh, how'd you do that? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, it's going to cost you, like, so-and-so money. Oh, it's like money. I'm trying to do that for the, uh, blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, instead of spending, you know, $100 a on a day, don't want to invest in themselves on your shit. serious about their craft. Yeah. And those are people you just don't want to even surround yourself with. I've come to the conclusion. You find those people, like in the beginning, it's mad fun to just work with everybody. But then at a certain point, when you're focused on branding yourself, you got to like be exclusive as to who you work with. Make sure you're putting out good work. Like there are people who hit me up and will ask me like, let me get a feature and I'll give them my prices. And I'll be like, I'll work with budgets. We can talk this out, but I need to hear some music first. Because if your music is ass, I'm not even going to do this feature. Yeah. Like, I don't want it. Like, I'll pass on the $150. Like, it's cool. So. Yeah. That's, that's really smart, too, in the long term of it, you know, because you yeah. don't want to sell your brand out for 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. People associate you with that one ass song that they heard, and they didn't even bother to check exactly. it. And they're like, oh, I remember he did this song. Like, have you heard this? And then they show their friends this song after they just played the one song you do fuck with. And then it's like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah, it's just all branding when it comes down to it, making sure you surround yourself with the right people. Yeah, I get that. That's a fact. All right, appreciate it. Thank you for coming and joining us on 30,000 Feet, the podcast. I just want to thank Brandon over here for joining us as well, too. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. I'm going to have both our Instagrams underneath of our picture frames here, as well as running down at the bottom of the screen throughout the rest of the video and make sure you go click on the uh, link in the description 
and follow him and subscribe to the channel, click the bell, like the video, all that shit. And we finna wrap this up. Much thanks. Good looks, Brandon. No problem.